Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are looking at the digital I.O. system, and in this video, we're going to look at reading from a digital input. So on the launch pad, there are two buttons or switches called S1 and S2, and they are connected to some port pins. And remember, if I want to figure out how the launch pad IO is attached to the MCU we're using, we need to go out to the Launchpad Development Kit user's guide. <clears throat> so this, we don't go look at, <clears throat> you know, the family overview, the monster data sheet. We, we don't look at the data sheet for the device specific. We want to know uh, what is connected to these pins, and that is done on the Launchpad board. So if you look at this, the picture of the Launchpad board is actually really descriptive because they put silkscreen text of the port numbers. So you'll notice that there's two switches and they're labeled S1 and S2 and S1 is connected to port four bit one and S2 is connected to port two <clears throat> bit three. And in this experiment or this exercise, what we'll do is we will uh, respond to an input press on switch one. And what we'll do is we will toggle LED one. And remember LED one happens to sit down here on port one bit zero, but it's an, but we need to know more than just how or what pin switch one is connected to. We need to know what the circuitry looks like. <clears throat> so it is a single pole, single throw switch. And the other, the external terminal or the downwind terminal, or you could call it the input, is connected to ground. And the way that this works is if you press the switch, you will pull port, port four bit one to a zero. But when it's not pressed, the line will be toggling, or not toggling, it will be floating, and you never know what it's going to be at. So this is the case where we need to put a pull-up resistor on the MSP430 so that when the switch is not pressed, we can pull it up to a 1. So we need to enable the pull-up, pull-down resistor, and then we need to configure it as a pull-up. And then what will happen is we will read a press as a 0 and a not press as a 1. So that's the logic that we'll use. Let's think a little bit about how we're actually going to read from the switch. <clears throat> we are going to use a technique called polling. <clears throat> and polling refers to when you just sit there in a loop and continually check the value of a bit. So for our example, <clears throat> we are going to have a flowchart that starts. We're going to initialize the ports. We're going to initialize the LED, initialize the switch in. And then we're going to come into a loop and we're going to look at the switch one value. <clears throat> and if it's not pressed, we are going to then loop up here and check it again. So we're going to create a polling loop that basically sits here and continually checks forever and ever and ever, and it only leaves if the action happens. So the action in this case <clears throat> is going to be that the button is pressed, switch one is equal to a zero, and it will exit the loop, toggle LED one, and then we'll come back and get back into the polling loop. Okay, so there's a couple downsides of this approach. We do use polling. I mean, polling is a commonly used thing, but you got to be aware of some of the issues with it. First and foremost, this is a really inefficient way to check uh, a bit because we put the program in a loop where it cannot do anything else. It is just sitting there checking anything, anything, anything. So we couldn't check another switch. We couldn't check if something happened on a timer. We are just going to sit here and use all of our CPU cycles to just sit in this loop. And we're going to sit in it most of the time because, uh, you know, the MCU's running to you know, megahertz, right? So millions of clock cycles are happening while you're just sitting there going, it's a one, it's a one, it's a one, it's a one. So there's a downside that's pretty inefficient, P burns a lot of power to just check something. Then the other issue is this. When I press the button, I have a human finger, which is relatively slow. So when I press the button, the switch will go to a zero, and then you'll go toggle the LED, which is fine, and you'll come back up and say, okay, now I'm going to pull and wait for the next press. The issue is that the person's finger is still on the button because they can't remove it in a nanosecond. It takes <clears throat> milliseconds. It takes hundreds of milliseconds or quarter of a second for a finger to be removed. So it's actually going to come back up here and go right through this logic again. So it's going to be like the finger's st still on the button, the finger's still on the button. The issue with that is that we are going to basically toggle LED one of, you know, 10,000 times or 100,000 times before the person can ever get their finger off the button, okay? But let's just code this up and see how it works because this will get us started and then we'll look at a technique to kind of mitigate that uh, constant toggling when the finger is on there. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and fire up CCS 
and let's start a new project. Make sure your MSP430 board is plugged in. And I will do a new project, and I'm going to call this ASM Dig Dig IO, and then uh, we'll call it inputs and polling. That's why. <clears throat> Assembly empty only, and we're off and running. We want this flowchart on here because that, we're just going to code that directly. Luckily, someone made that for us. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's come down here, and we're going to start off with an init. Now we're going to initialize some ports, and this is just one-time code that runs at the beginning. Let's think about uh, initializing LED one. So we know what we know how to do this from a prior video. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the comment first. So I need to set the data direction register for this so that port one bit zero is an output. So I'm going to set this as output, and then I'll remind myself that P one bit zero is equal to LED one. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do in this instruction. And I'm going to do this with a bit set instruction. And I'm going to use the label from the header file called bit zero. <clears throat> and it, this exists in the port one DIR register. So that is the logic that I use to set LED one as an output uh, by going into the direction register for it, data direction register, and setting bit zero. Okay, so it's an output. Now let's do this. Let us put it to an initial value. Okay, so let's put it to zero. So let's do a bit clear dot b, and we'll go pound bit zero, and this is done in the port one output register. So this is going to be make. Let's go set initial initial value of LED one equals off. <clears throat> okay. All right. So our LED is set up. Now let's set up the inputs. So we haven't done this before. So here's what I'm first and foremost going to do. I am going to explicitly set the direction register for the switch one port to an input. And I'm going to do that so that it's more readable. I know that the default value is an input, but I want to explicitly do it so that when I look at these instructions for initialization, I know exactly what's going on. So I'm going to do that by doing this. Bit clear up B. And this is at, let's put our comment here. So I'm going to set p4 bit 1 as input and remind myself that port 4 bit 1 is equal to switch 1. So that reminds me that I'm going bit 1 of p4 dir. Okay, so I just explicitly set that as an input. And that reminds me. I didn't need to do that because that was the reset value, but that's all right. So life is good. And now we need to do the next setup, which I need to enable the pull-up resistor. So I need to do this. I need to enable pull, and I'm going to say up slash down resistor on P orbit one. And I, that's important for me in my comments because this does not tell it whether it's an up or down resistor. It just says there will be a resistor and I need another step. So I'm going to do a bit set dot B. I'm going to go pound bit one. And this exists now. I do this in the port four resistor enable register. Okay. And I happen to know that <laughs> because I've, I've looked it up prior but if you didn't know that you would go to the msp430 family data sheet the monster because that's where all these configuration registers exist okay now finally i need to configure resistor resistor as pull up and i'm going to do that now watch what, how i do this if you remember bit set b and i'm going to say bit one make sure to get your ones in there this is done in the port for out register. So look at this. This is interesting. You have port one bit out, and this is how I drove to the output. But then down here, I'm putting something in, in the output register, but it's doing something different. So what's happening is that when the direction register has a set for the bit as an input, then the, the output register has a secondary function, which is to control whether the pull up or pull down resistor is either up or down. Okay, so this is how you do it. All right, so you, that's just how it works. There's no way around it. Okay, so I think I have my ports configured the way I want. The last thing I need to do, though, is I got to turn on the system. Okay, so lock L, low power mode 5 in the uh, PM5, power module 5, control 0 register. So this is basically enable digital I.O. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I've got bit set, bit clear, bit clear, set, set clear and then I have bit zero port one and then bit one 
port four. And this is where you see the masks or the, the labeling uh, from the header file be very helpful because you don't have to remember any of these addresses. Okay. And there's a lot of opportunity to mess up with syntax or with typos. So you're going to, you're going to have some compile errors and that's fine. Just look at, just find them in the debugger and uh, let it roll. Okay. So now we're ready to come down. Let's do our polling loop. Let's first of all, let's make a label that's like descriptive. So I know exactly where I'm at. I put a main label there just out of habit. I don't really need it, uh, but I'm going to put a pull S1. And now I want to think about what I'm going to do. I need to check port. I'm, I'm looking at switch one. That's on port four bit one. So what I am going to do is I'm going to use a test instruction called bit. If you remember what bit does, it is going to and the address or the destination with a bit mask. And then what you do is you check the zero flag to see whether the value you're interested in is a zero or a one. So we're interested in bit one and we are going to do this on finally our input register. Okay, so then we're gonna test port four bit one <clears throat> and we're gonna see if it's a zero or one. <clears throat> okay, so how does this work? Remember that what we do, bit one is basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this. And we're going to and it. Okay, so we're going to and that with port four bit in. I'm, this is just typing. I'll delete this in a second. The and operation does not change port four bit one at all. It just configures the status flags. The status flag we care about is the zero flag because what's going to happen is it's going to clear all the bits out. And actually, that's not right. You're going to clear all the bits out that are a zero, and we're only caring about this this one right here in the mask. If port four this register in this location, bit one, is a one, the result of this will be, so it's basically if one, then z is equal to zero. The result of the and was not a zero across the entire register. And we can use that knowledge to say, hey, this value is a one. And that means nobody's pressed the button because the pull-up resistor is pulling it up. So what we can say is that, okay, I can use this logic right here to finally put my instruction to say, you know what, jump if not equal to zero back to pull S1. And this now is my polling loop. So I test the instruction. I have to know the logic of what's happening <clears throat> of whether a one is not pressed or a zero is not pressed. And so I work through that in my head. And if I do a jump if not zero back to here, I will sit in this loop until somebody presses the button. So I'm basically gonna say stay in Pulling loop. And that's this logic right here. Okay, life is good. Now let's do this. If you ever press the button, it will come out and you need to do something such as toggle, oh, toggle LED one. And here's how you're gonna do it. Remember the logic for a toggle is exclusive or, and now I'm finally gonna go up here and I'm gonna say pound bit zero of ampersand P one out. So this is toggle LED one. So this is remember, this is like the same instruction. A lot of times I'll just copy these things right here, but it's bit zero P one out. That's where LED one is. And all I do is an XOR on it. And that is it. So now let's just jump to main and let's test this thing. Okay. So I go ahead and let's fire up a session. I got my board plugged in. And off we go. Okay, so let's just go ahead and run this thing and see what happens. So let me do this. And I'm gonna hit run. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna press switch one. So here it is, I go press. Ooh, the LED came on. So check this out, this is great. No, but look at the behavior of it. So when I press and hold, the LED kind of gets dim. Maybe, hopefully you can see that. Uh, when I let go, it goes to a value. In this case, it went to a zero. If I do it again, it might go to a one. It's almost like random, the value that it, that it lands on. And when I press it, it gets dim. So what is going on here? Well, what's happening is you're sitting, when you press the button, you, your finger's still on the button. So you're sitting there and you're just hammering, you're toggling it over and over and over. There's probably, you probably toggle it 100,000 times before you can get your, your slow human finger off the button. But who cares? We implement it. Well, we'll care in a second. We did implement the polling loop. So it is sitting here right now in this loop where it is just waiting for you to press it. And you come along and press it and it does something. So you did a poll. Great.
Well, now let's fix the polling loop. <laughs> so, so one of the ways to fix this is you can actually simply put a little delay in here. So what if we put just a little bit of delay after you toggle the LED? And what that'll do is it'll allow the human a little bit of time to get their finger off. Okay, so this is a, a common technique. So I'm going to delay maybe 100 milliseconds or 250 milliseconds, and that just gives the human time. So now let's create our delay loop. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a delay loop. Okay, so let's go delay. And we're going to do this as a, a little for loop that counts down. So I could actually put like a comment right here, and then uh, just to kind of say this is my delay loop. And what we're going to do is let's do a for loop where we put a big number Let's go a big number into a register we're not using. So let's say R4. And this is like, I'm initializing my loop variable. So R4 will hold my loop variable. I put a huge number into it, and then I'm gonna count down to zero. So every time through the for loop, I'll go dec by, you know, that'll subtract one from R4. And then I just simply do a jump if not zero to delay. And the way that this works <clears throat> is this little delay section is just gonna, it's gonna start off at a big number, and then it's just going to go, okay, subtract one. Is it zero? Nope. Subtract two or subtract one again. Subtract one again. Subtract one again. R4 will count from FFFF down to zero. So it'll go all the way down. And as soon as it gets to zero, it'll exit that. And then it'll jump main. Okay. So this delay loop will give us some new behavior, which might be a little bit better. Okay. So let's fire this up again. And now let's see the way that this works. <laughs> No errors, no compilers, that's pretty good. So now finally, let's go ahead and let it rip. All right, so here's my behavior now. So I'm gonna press it. Oh, it toggled, it toggled, it toggled. This looks pretty consistent actually, this looks really nice. This is great. So it's actually working a little bit better than what I had had before, actually a million times better. Watch this though. If I press and hold, it's gonna toggle. And why is that? It's because you're just sitting there constantly going through the, 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 the loop where it's not pulling. It's just like, oh my gosh, it's always pressed, always pressed, always pressed. This also shows you about how much delay we got. So every time the on and off, that's about the time for the delay loop. So it's, I don't know, maybe a half a second, you think? Maybe 500 milliseconds, that delay loop that we did? But anyway, that worked. It, it isn't perfect. It's sometimes you don't, well, I guess, you know, if you hold a button down, you do want somebody to respond to it. Like if you're a remote control and you're holding down the channel up, you want it to continually react to you. So that is maybe the behavior that we wanted. But more importantly, it's the behavior in the flowchart that we did or that we were tasked with implementing. So you did it. You read from an input. You learned about a technique called polling. You learned about a little bit of the drawbacks of polling, which is interfacing with a slow human. So you have to accommodate that with a delay loop, for an example. And so that is it. Congratulations. Uh, as always, remember, support my channel by subscribing so that I can continue to make all these videos for you. But see ya.